One of the things that's always irritated me about entry-level caravans is the hidden costs. You get the recommended retail price, and then you discover that you've had to pay for a plus pack or a premium pack, and perhaps a sunroof. And because they come fitted from the factory in most cases, those are costs that you're going to have to pay. Well, for its new entry-level pursuit range, Bailey has decided to incorporate all of those costs. It means there's a slightly higher price tag, but it does mean you get things like the essential Alco AKS stabilizer and a sunroof as standard kit. You get various other extras included inside as well. While here on the outside, you get alloy wheels and for 2017, polar white sidewalls. So the Pursuit comes in line with the rest of the Bailey range in going all white rather than its previous gray. You also get a couple of lockers. There are two small ones at the front here in the corners thanks to Bailey's positioning the gas locker in the middle of the van. And there's another one underneath the fixed bunks at the back. Now, Bailey's entry-level models were always orientated towards families, and perhaps that's dropped off a little bit in recent years. But for 2017, that focus has been renewed with two new models, the 576 and this, the 565. So let's see what it's like inside. The name 565 might be a little bit familiar from the old Pursuit range, but the layout in here is completely different. That said, it does feel rather familiar. And the reason for that is that it basically follows the lead of last year's new Bailey Pegasus and Kona with fixed bunks here and opposite a rather nice little dinette, which is an ideal place for kids to play and to be separate from the adult area at the front of the van. These bunk beds are a really good size. Each one gets their own window and light. And of course, there's another roof light overhead. The single bed here on the near side is made by dropping the table and rearranging the cushions. And of course, there's masses of storage back here. We've got three overhead lockers, space under each of the dinette seats, and more space underneath the fixed bunk here on the offside. One place where the 565 really scores over the Ancona is in the sense of space and light back here. And that's because the bulkhead from the Ancona is gone. In the Ancona, you have a tall tower refrigerator here on the near side, but in the 565, we've got a nice low sideboard, which is the ideal place to put a TV, so you can watch it from both the dinette and the lounge, with a cupboard beneath and a locker above. Now that fridge has moved over here into the kitchen on the offside. We've got a three ring gas hob with no electric hot plate and a combined oven and grill. But of course you have to remember this is an entry level model. And one thing that's quite unusual to find in an entry level model is a standard microwave. Usually that is part of the option packs on most of its rivals. There's a new square sink taken from Bailey's motorhome ranges and a reasonable amount of worktop boosted by a lift up flap. Storage is at a premium. There's a pan cupboard beneath the cooker, but the space next to it that looks like it should be a cupboard is actually blanked off because of course, that's where Bailey stores its gas bottles in the middle of the van, nice and close to the center line to try and aid stability when towing. Up above, you'll find three small lockers. The middle ones have got cutlery racks in, and it's great to see that there are two sockets in the kitchen here. In fact, there are plenty of sockets throughout this van, which is always great to find in an entry-level model. Now, the 576, this van's big brother, has got its washroom right here in the center of the van, but not the 565, which, like the Ancona, has got it right at the back. Although the washroom is full width, much of the space inside is taken up by the wardrobe, which occupies the offside corner of the van. The door features a good height mirror, ideal for checking how you look before you go out for an evening. And inside, there's a laundry basket and unfortunately storage for the table, which is a bit of a pain when the wardrobe's full of clothes. The shower cubicle is a good size and fully lined. It has an eco camel shower head, but there's no shelf or light in here. There is, however, a good size window in the washroom, though it's a shame it isn't smoked for privacy. There aren't any flaps to access the storage space underneath these sofas, but that is pretty much as far as my criticism goes of this lounge, particularly when you bear in mind that this is an entry-level model. You really wouldn't know it. We've got a standard stereo here and these attractive curtains hidden behind neat built-in pelmets. Over here behind the standard scatter cushions, you'll find end bolsters, just the thing for leaning against and relaxing when you're watching TV. Plus, of course, overhead, well, there's that big sunroof. And neatly, Bailey has managed to incorporate that while also retaining a front locker, which a lot of caravanners like to see in tandem with the side lockers on either side. These sofas are a really good size. You can sit two or three 
over there on the off side and three, perhaps even four on the near side because it's slightly longer. That's great in the day, but at night it does mean you've got a bit of a step in your otherwise huge double bed. The Pegasus Ancona has been Practical Caravan's best tourer for small families for the past two seasons, and the Pursuit 565 just builds on that success. In fact, for me, in many ways, it's even better. It weighs just over 1,400 kilos, which brings it well within the capabilities of most family cars. It feels bright and airy and spacious inside, and it costs just a little over £16,000, which to me represents fantastic value for money.